It's been over a week since the results of the SU elections here in DCU. The student body have expressed mixed reactions. It's a definitely a popularity thing. Certain people, they offer the usual offering sweets and try to coerce. I actually know someone who, uh, they gave him a red bull to vote, but then to ensure that they actually were voting, he said, oh, well, we'll just watch your vote because she was by a computer. So they stayed with her to make sure she voted for the person they wanted them to. And it was almost like sort of coercion, you know what I mean? Um, I know two people came down to talk to us, so I think her name was Emer and Sarah could have been. So I voted for them because they were um, trying to get more facilities for like the people who have to go between both campuses and stuff like that. So I thought that was good. Um, yeah, I was really pleased for some of it and then for others I wasn't so pleased. I was delighted that Siobhan and Itai got elected um, to engagement and development because I think she'll do like a really, really good job of that. Um, but the people that I voted for weren't voted into other positions, I thought that um, Jason would have been, not that Podge wouldn't, isn't going to do a good job, but Jason would have been a really good welfare officer and I thought that Emer's experience would have been second to none uh, to be the president. So frankly, I didn't pay a massive amount of attention to uh, the SU election as it was happening, but obviously the case with your man Bino, he got the massive social media attention for getting all the celebrities for that mass viral video he got. And frankly, uh, I would feel that, you know, even though I know nothing about his policies, the fact that he could organize something like that, get such a wide array of celebrities and figures to talk with him, would give me, you know, he can get something done. He's the kind of person who could go out there and do things. But frankly, it also, on the other side of things, definitely highlights the fact that, you know, it's a bit of a popularity contest. We met with some of this year's runners up to hear about their campaigns and also to discuss their personal experiences in the elections. It's stressful. I didn't think I'd have that much, I'm very chill, I don't really get stressed that easily, but I, the amount of stress was insane. And also I think because we have a big campaign team, I find it hard to kind of spread myself out, like say, like um, Podge did, he had a lot of people everywhere, and I didn't have, I had like three people with me. So I think that's what, it was, that was what caused most of the stress. I think just that the timing was quite awkward for a lot of people. Um, like I know that we had to change the initial dates had been while we were a good few of us were on teaching practice and stuff. So it had to be adjusted to suit us because like it wouldn't have been fair for us, you know, been not being able to run at all. Um, but while I was out campaigning, most of the Pat's campus was gone. There was only one year who, like one year of BEDs who were there. So we were missing, you know, over a thousand people. Um, so, you know, that's less people to campaign towards. And I, like, I, I'm not saying I just wanted to get the Pat's vote, but you know what I mean? Like it, it, they are your people, so to speak, you know, but they would have probably related a lot. So it, had they been there, it would have been quite helpful. If you look at the welfare role or race in particular, um, I suppose I was the most experienced in SU terms, but Podge had a lot of experience with um, societies. I've only been involved in one or two small societies. He's been involved in big societies as well. So in terms of experience versus popularity, like how do you measure who's more popular, me or Podge or other, the other two girls? Like it's really hard to say, so I couldn't really tell. Um, and then with the presidency race, there was um, Niall and Emer who are both sat in the exec and the other three people haven't sat in the exec. So they had experience as well. And um, the two of them were the, fir were the first and second. So it's, it is really hard to say, and I don't really want to say it whether it's experience or popularity, and, because it is really hard to say, like, how can you measure experience and popularity, you know? In the time you are given, it's really hard to actually build up the, let's say, campaigning network or to actually reach out to so many students in only one week. So I really would like to see a SU president that is professional and obviously engagement from my postgraduate point of view. I would really want him to be reaching more to postgraduates in DCU and maybe manage to get them more involved than what they are right now. Based on my experience and based on the opinion of people who I've talked to who've run for previous elections and stuff like that, where they've said the likes of the hustings and the debate, although they are fantastic and they do actually show off the candidates who are good, who know the stuff or who don't, they're not engaged with enough. Enough people don't watch them. And there's your biggest issue. Based on my own manifesto and also based on previous experience as a student in a minority within the college, um, I would like to see him try and continue some of the work that the current SU has done. I've been talking to students within my own year and years below me. They've all said that they don't feel that the SU, the upcoming SU, will do as good a job or better. 
they're fearing that. Now I hope and I really do hope that the upcoming issue proves me wrong and proves everyone else wrong. Colleen Brady, DCU TV News.